so here's what we're going to do. Sometimes I just like researching on the internet, you know? And I come across these letters, right? The letters S, S, N. And let's look into it just a little bit. Just surface level, right? So, I've just always been curious about this number. It's a nine-digit number issued to U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and temporary working residents. All right. So, it is used to track individuals. Just surface level, right? And obviously for taxation purposes. So, the number was created in 1936. It says for the sole purpose of tracking. You see that? I don't know, that just sounds weird. Soul, like your soul. I mean... We're all numbers, right? But you see how they throw benefit, entitlement, like it's to it's to your benefit that they they track your earnings, right? First off, you're working and you're give you have to give them your money, right? And they want to track you. I mean, right off the rip, that's kind of like bullshit, right? So This, the S, S, N, those letters, right? Look at this. Introduced, you see that? November 1936. Look at the 113, like the number for dishonesty. Politics, bullshit, dishonest. Disinfo, not true, illusions, fiction, 113, right? To sync up with the, the date it was introduced. You see that? The month and the year, excuse me. And you see the reflection in there with the 311, the number for dishonesty. And look, I'm not well educated in this knowledge. I'm just kind of showing you. It's right in front of your face. It's just right on Wikipedia. So, they were first issued by the SSA in November 1936, right? As part of the New Deal. So, you see the date. Right there. It leaves 37 days in the year. Track in Gematria equals 37, right? And that's what they use it for, to track, right? You see that? On November 24th, 1936. 36, excuse me. What does it say? 1,074 of the nation's 45,000 post offices were designated type typing centers to type up these cards, right? That were then sent to D.C. as part of the campaign for the new program. You see that? It says... A re-evaluation of the department policy against reuse in July 1976 allowed the request of 19-year-old Brigham Young student Randy Jenkins from Glendale, Arizona to be granted the lowest SS after the original woman given it had died a few years earlier. He later applied for a standard number due to often being questioned about the low number. Now, that just doesn't make sense, right? Like, how 
how are you going to be questioned about the low number when you're not supposed to share it with anybody anyways? And a woman had it originally, the lowest number administered, right? SSN. And then this man came along and took the number. It just doesn't make sense, right? So, before 86, people often did not obtain a, one of these until the age of 14. And of course, it was for tracking income. And I just, it, we're, we're supposed to be free, right? And I don't, I just don't understand. They want to manipulate us and they, they act like they need, they need to know, right? They need to know the numbers, <laughs> but it's just bullshit. Look at the tax reform act of 1986 required parents to list these for each dependent over the age of five for who they wanted to claim for a deduction. So they're already taking your money, right? And then you have to, you have to enter your kids into the system for them to not take as much. <laughs> that's, that's manipulation right there. See, just to get a deduction, you have to enter them into the system so they can be scripted by the numbers, right? And before this act, parents claiming deductions were simply trusted not to lie. So, you see the dishonesty, right? And just the confusion to go along with the 113 earlier with the November 1936 when this was introduced because it's all about disinfo, dishonesty, politics, bullshit with the 113, right? And they say during the first year of the tax reform act, this anti-fraud change resulted in 7 million fewer minor dependents being claimed. So we go from not being trusted, right? To now the the Tax Reform Act is an anti-fraud change. So where's the fraud at? And excuse me, like this video, these are the videos I really like. You know what I mean? Because it makes you think. So hopefully y'all are sticking it out here. But so we go from, from being trusted to now this change is anti-fraud and you see our rights just going away more and more, right? They want us in their system with the numbers, you see? And you, you see how it says the disappearance of these dependents is believed, the word with lie in the middle, to have involved either children who never existed or tax deductions improperly claimed by non-custodial parents. And then it says, in 1988, the threshold was lowered to two years old. <laughs> right? And in 1990, the threshold lowered yet again to one. Today, the S, S, N, those three letters required regardless of the child's age to receive an exemption basically to not get robbed as much and this all just confusion and distraction to take away from the main point of you are working and you are forced to hand over money correct <laughs> So, it says, since the parents have often applied for these for their children soon after birth, today it can be done on the app 
right? For the birth certificate. So yeah, they will definitely encourage you and help you to get signed up and get your children signed up in that system because we gotta we gotta be scripted by numbers right and birth dates you know what i mean so i hope you enjoyed this and look look down at the bottom sign this immediately and report to your employer right because it's all a system, it's all by the numbers, it's deeper than you think. Um, thank you for supporting me. I hope, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time.